Well, that's right. exactly right. That's the uh, the console game exit because yeah. uh, is, it, is it at Forza? Oh, yeah, Forza I, I, that still has the tire barrier there. Racers, I'm excited to welcome you to a not quite race recon. Uh, we're going over the update 6.0 announcement that happened just a few hours ago. And in this update, Turn 10 is embracing the build and building meets freedom. The bid headline for update 6.0 is that the progression system is changing. As they announced back in February, all, all unlocks will be available at the very beginning for every car, and the car points needed to install these unlocks will be available through in-game currency. The current exchange rate is going to be 4,500 currency to 500 car points. But with the major changes that are coming out to the progression system, there are unfortunately no new tracks coming to the game with this update. But we still have a full slate of new cars for both car pass and the feature cars playlist, and a full slate of events out for the next month. Some of the other improvements shown off during the overview included options to change lighting in the livery editor, uh, the pit lane for Daytona being finally fixed to improve both safety during racing and realism. So join me as we go and dive down into the details of this update. So over here we have the full update release notes for update 6.0. And as it says, the update is live now. It went live basically at the time of the announcement coming out. Up front, they call out the changes to the car progression system as well as the improved freedom that everyone now has. Isn't it nice to be free? <laughs> Uh, following the addition of the Daytona track, the, the internet basically was in an uproar, and even during one of even during one of the earlier races at Daytona, one of the drivers took the stock car exit path to enter onto the track instead of following the path uh, that you're supposed to for the sports car circuit. So we will not have we will not be training the future drivers incorrectly anymore. We have the correct pit lane exit uh, laid out for us in, in Forza. Though, as we'll see as we get further down into uh, into the document, it seems that it may have possibly caused another glitch and it's a known issue that they're working to address. So, right up front, the car progression changes. As we discussed at the, at the opening, uh, players are now able to unlock and install any car upgrade from the very beginning. And all you need to have are the credits for it. Credits, that's what the currency in game is called. It's 4,500 monies, you know, it's 4,500 credits. But 4,500 credits gets you 500 car points, so we'll round up, call it 5,000, and we will see what happens to the in-game economy. Uh, as I talked about in last week's Race Recon, I'm interested to see like how all of this plays out, because this potential will still see people uh, resulting to AFK grinding to get the credits they need to do their upgrades, but uh what was pointed out in discussions with some other friends as we we're talking about what what was just announced is now you can relatively inexpensively upgrade your car to a top of a class and as those uh class open events come out or as those uh class level career events come out just take that car into that lobby and put the levels on it that way and it's a pretty easy way to like get your cars to jump up levels further as you like them and uh, what you hear in the background are the dulcet tones of Forza Motorsports in-game music. I so rarely hear it because I have it turned off for streaming and I, I supplement it with my own, but the new home music, uh, the new home space has new music. So apparently eight new tracks exist in the game. So be on the lookout for those as they get cycled through. So part of our full slate of events this month includes the new career mode. The new career mode is the combustion tour, embracing this new freedom of building that they are so graciously returning to us uh we are going to be going on a tour taking you through the joys of ever expanding cylinder counts so starting off with the four cylinders of fury with the spotlight car being the alfa romeo 4c not alfa romeo yeah alfa romeo 4c ha i gotta trust myself more uh onto the super sixes where we get to go onto gozira and have the nissan skyline gtr v spec uh v spec 2 Two, almost at V Spec door, not not quite that one. That'll probably be sprinkled in as a special edition later on. And then we get the V8 Heritage, where we get to take out the classic V8 muscle car, the Dodge Challenger from 1969, and then and rounding out, not quite at the pinnacle of V10s and excuse me, V12s and W16s, but we get to take out a V10. V10s are like the the most cylinders anyone would ever really need. Who cares about anything more than that, except for later we'll, we'll talk about that later though but the v10 titans gets us into a lamborghini huracan uh lp610-4 so go out compete in those events uh pick up those cars on discounts on the week that they're out 
and enjoy them and i look forward to also seeing you in the open lobbies with with those spotlight cars uh and actually be able to start off at the top of the lobby i like i said probably still just gonna grind from the bottom i kind of i kind of like seeing what i can do in uneven equipment i know i already suck but at least i have the excuse that my car is weaker than yours and then uh, this is actually probably the most creative thing that i saw that they did now that you have just full reign to swap out anything that you want on your car the open class is getting a little twist to it so each week the uh sort of the the middle class that we're going to see like so c b a and s are going to have a specific cylinder count affixed to them so you'll have c class with only six cylinders b class with four cylinders a class with eight cylinders and ultimately s class with 12 cylinders so the 12 cylinder lobbies are going to either sound amazing or like piercing pain in your ears let's see which one happens the rewards for completing both the open tour and the uh combustion tour are for the combustion tour the 2009 pagani uh, zonda chinke roadster and uh cinque 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 I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and like check that again I, i'm really bad at italian i'm sorry uh and then taking us to completing the open class will get you the ferrari 599 xx so that's your your 12 cylinders right there that they're not going to let you take out into the lobbies well I, I guess s class you got the s class 12. so hopefully the 599 xx is in s class so that final week you get to enjoy that one so as stated above along with the uh, combustion tour the spotlight cars that corresponds with each of those weeks is the alfa romeo 4c the 2002 nissan skyline gtr v spec 2 and the 1969 Dodge RT, and then ultimately the Lamborghini Huracan LP610. And using all those gets you into a lovely Bugatti Zonda. Now, for our big money boys with the car pass, we have up first the Nissan number 23 Nissan Motorsport Silvia Super Silhouette. I can't explain how much I love this car. Box fenders are the truth just 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 bow down before our box fender overlords and just just learn to love just learn to love again uh in 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 less glowing prey not glowing rays i have nothing against these other cars but uh we then get into the toyota 86 trd se uh i forget what the se stands for i will maybe do research and like put it on the screen somewhere uh and then uh excitingly it was one of the number one picks and one of the number one like heartbreaks at the 24 hours of daytona but we get the two uh, we get the 2020 number 14 vassar sullivan lexus R, uh, rcf gt3 car when both of those cars got knocked out of that race i cannot explain how sad i was like that is the way those cars got taken out of the 24 hours of daytona it, it's it's just heart-wrenching uh i have to say uh IMSA released the uh uh their how to win the weekend videos uh so it's think about drive to survive but for IMSA endurance the IMSA endurance racing series go check it out I'll like drop a link to it here I'll like probably like, even have it pop up right now great watch 14 minutes of your day gets you ready because next weekend is Sebring and we get to watch these cars shake themselves to pieces so if you if you don't know you know me now uh sports car racing and endurance racing is my first love and i'm sorry my my voice is getting really uh cruddy <laughs> uh it's fuck it we do it live here before all things so rounding out the car pass cars we have another uh it's gonna be interesting to see where this falls in so it feels a little too late to be a 70s f1 car it's like a little too advanced uh and it's a little too early to be one of the grand prix rivals so it, it's a new f1 car it's the number 12 uh team lotus 98t uh so being in 1986 puts it in sort of a weird no man's land between the the last generations of f1 cars that are currently in the game i'll be interested to see what it gets lumped up against because it, it feels like it is a poor fit for both of those categories i i say it has more in common with the formula 70s cars but it, it's it's I, I don't know we'll have to see where that one slots in so moving on down we have our spec series that are going to be like running alongside everything else uh so we're going to have uh m3 spec uh the p2 series uh i'm going to absolutely go and mob in that i have my basically hammered out 
uh, Mazda Speed Source LMP2 car. Uh, I know, of course, they're going to have the the spec hopper modifications to it, but uh, I I I know that car inside and out. I'm still slow in it, but I know it. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we then get to go into the Vinci's Le Mans prototypes, uh, another front another fun hopper, and then uh, the early LMP car, uh, the early LMP series. I don't know if we've had this one yet. Uh, I'll have to like go back and look through the previous notes, but if it did come out, I didn't race it. And if I didn't race it, I'm certainly gonna do it this time. And then as we mentioned up, up, up above in the open series, mirroring what we have in uh, the open career, we have specific cylinder counts pegged to specific uh, classes. Actually, uh, I may be wrong. So let's, let, let's compare. Uh, let's see so open for a class we have four cylinders and in the open class tour it's four cylinders in b class so they do mix it up a little bit so you can't exactly have the same build between your open class tour and the open series that are going to be in multiplayer so running down what the open series multiplayer is going to be so in a class uh we have four cylinders and then you're going to be doing just standard d class open and then six cylinders in S class. So that's like going to be just screaming uh, forced induction sixes. I don't see very many cases where you're going to have an NA6 that is gonna be running in, in S class. If we, if you can build an NA6 and run it in S class and be competitive, I will be impressed and I will not be able to give you anything. If you come join the discord, I'll like give you a role. Uh, master of the six cylinders. Uh, and then a class that's going to be wild. So you have a class eight cylinders and then ultimately, uh, back up to S class for 12 cylinders. And then the also rans for those other weeks are B class, C class, and E class. And then as discussed, we have the spotlight series that will correspond with the, uh, that'll correspond with the spotlight series during the combustion tour and uh, a whole list of new rivals events. And I'll, I'll let you just kind of absorb that one there. And along with this, uh, something that's actually really exciting that I do want to point out, uh, the first spec, the first, spe uh, the first rivals event that we have is something that a lot of people have asked for. The first rival series that we have is any GT division car at Silverstone people, people for a while have asked for a specific, like hopper based rivals leaderboard. And we're going to be getting that. And with all the pressure that was applied to make them make Formula Mazda a uh, a recurring list or a, a permanent fixture, maybe this is the first sign that we can get our permanent fixture of GT of um, of GT spec uh, of GT spec rivals. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I want to go with. So uh, just check out the rivals leaderboards. I know I'm going to be doing my best at that uh, at that Forza GT spec list. Um, as I'll announce in another series, I'm like desperately working to acclimate myself to my wheel. So I'm going to have shitty times because I'm going to do my best, like put everything down on wheel. So a few things that we did not get into in the overview that they provided uh, are the bug fixes and improvements. A lot of these bug fixes and improvements are kind of general issues that have popped up in different places within like multiplayer setups and in private lobbies. I know particularly for me, uh, this last one here, the issues with names over cars with ultra wide, uh, I've gotten a number of comments of like, why are the names all the way off in the bushes instead of over the cars? So looking forward to seeing that work out. Uh, of course, we have some uh, updates and improvements with the AI. Uh, I'll be testing out because I'm doing a lot of career mode racing to get practice and not run into other people. So those improvements to the drive guitars to like make the beginning of the race flow a little bit smoother, uh, slow, like lessening the midfield collisions and trying to like prevent like just full breakaways of the field. Uh, that'll be nice to see. Not that I'm seeing the front of the field very often. And then uh, it, not that I've like seen it a lot recently because i'm doing my best to like not use rewinds i think i have it disabled in most of my uh career mode playthroughs right now because i need to embrace consequences uh but the ai shouldn't drive erratically if you're using rewinds anymore and and now when the ai actually does take a penalty you'll be able to see it in the, in the notification list like you would if you're in a multiplayer limit, as if you're in a multiplayer race so what we uh, we have another improvement to the FRR where they're going to be uh, improving the accuracy of assigning fault inside swipes. Uh, 
again anything with frr i uh take worth a grain of grain of salt right now uh it's it's up in the air and it's beyond me to explain how that shit's working and then we, of course, have a list of individual fixes on a long list of cars. Uh, I will leave this for you to digest at your own pace. And then on to track changes. Uh, then we have the, as we said, the Daytona International Speedway pit lane update that's being fixed. But as I said, there was, there it appears to be an issue that was introduced with this update where you don't regain the control of your car at the right point. So I will have to get in there and experience it for myself to give you an idea of what exactly is going on with that. And I think you see, I already have it highlighted because I like copy this and like send it to a couple discords that I'm in as like, this is a big one. Forza has fixed the pit exploit or apparently fixed the pit exploit. Uh, I suck at timing. I could never pull it off. Uh, I, I never, I never, no, excuse me. I, I never tried. I, I'm, I'm innocent. I never would attempt to like to use an exploit for my own advantage. No, uh, but it appears that they've gotten rid of the exploit that where if you time the button press to select your fuel load, that it would just skip the animation and let you get seconds extra time. So that's a big one I know for a lot of competitive players. So that's going to be really interesting to see uh, what happens with that. But there are a number of other like game, just general gameplay fixes here as well. Uh, fixes for selections during private multiplayer, fixes for selections for your car when you're setting up your own multiplayer matches. Uh, there are improvements to the rewind where you can now use it off the initial start and even if cars have crossed the line where you're locked out of those things before. And there are up updates to the leaderboard where there are a number of reporting issues that when you select certain settings for how you wanted your race to be operated, the leaderboard would not represent those accurately and you couldn't use it for sort of strategic decision making while in the race. And that brings us down to the last changes which are in the livery editor. So we are now adding multiple lighting options. As someone that uses very specific colors to match branding, uh, I can't tell what my colors look like in the whatever light quality was in the existing like painting room. There are also a number of other issues with, with, with selecting colors for vinyls that would only have a single color and fine tune would give you access to multiple colors. And it wasn't really something that was a bug that was breaking the game, but more of a bug that was confusing and time wasting because I would pull up a vinyl layer, like, all right, I don't remember selecting something that had two colors and I'd have to verify that they were the same color just to like, ultimately it do nothing. So. It's nice that that's being like taken away and it's just going to represent what it needs to represent for like the, the painter working on the working on the piece. And finally, there are also updates to the photo mode and the customization screens and some of the accessibility features. Most of the accessibility features are just additions and expansions of the narration system so that people can take advantage of them if they are vision impaired. And there are a number of fixes for Logitech wheels as well, so that the lights will illuminate properly, as well as the lights on Fanatec wheels. Uh, the lights on my Moza wheel uh, seem to be working perfectly fine for me. And then uh, there are some global illumination fixes for all of those lovely, lovely ray tracing users, which I, uh, I, I do use. I like it to be pretty. So uh, we're fixing some of the flickering, so maybe that'll address some of uh, the artifacting that I was that I was seeing and called out during my Nuremberg test, um, as well as there are just like global illumination issues where the screen would flash. Uh, I personally didn't run into it on my PC uh, when I was playing at a friend's house on their Series X. Uh, I did run into that one, so I won't be able to personally test if that has been improved. But I look forward to hearing reports from anyone else. But with all that. That gets us down to the end of the current slate of updates that we have for update 6.0. Uh, hopefully nothing major is broken for anyone, but all in all, this looks to be a good step in the right direction for Forza Motorsport going forward. Uh, I look forward to seeing how the community reacts to it. Of course, uh, when we start Race Recon for the next series of Rivals events, as we start Race Recon for the next series of Open events, I'll be really looking forward to seeing what people do with all of this new freedom. Hopefully, some of these solid work classes where we have new leaders can be broken down by people experimenting and taking new fields into the field. So, I look forward to seeing what y'all do, and I look forward to reporting it to all y'all lovely people out there. So, as I 
always say, race safe, race smart. We'll see you on the track.